Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's Eric Kaufman. I'm here at the November 2017 Middle Investors Forum in Vancouver. Uh, I'm here with Doug McDonald, who's a Director and Corporate Development uh, VP for Almadex, one of the companies that I cover. Uh, very active company, great set of projects in Mexico. C can you give us like the, the short version of, uh, uh, you know, everybody, including me, I guess, is focused on the, the drill program that you've got going at El Cobre, but you know, there's, there's a fairly significant asset base that Almadex was given. Can you can you sort of give us a short version of how did Almadex come about, I suppose, and and, and in, a, in a sort of a sense, what are the major assets the company has, like not just the exploration project? Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. And thanks for thanks for having me here, Eric. Um, effectively, what Almadex is is 35 years of intellectual property uh, developed by Morgan and Dwayne Poliquin. Uh, the company, as it stands today, is a product of, uh, well, it, it, it was created in 1981, uh, went public in 1986. Uh, through that time, Duane uh, initially and increasingly, obviously, over time, Morgan, as, as he rose up through academia and then uh, the practice of prospecting, um, they've collected a range of assets that we think very highly of. And a lot of people don't realize that we own... Uh, we own a share of a diamond project into the Northwest Territories that uh, that Duane uh, is still very keen on. Uh, we own other projects in the Yukon, uh, the Spences Bridge Gold Belt here in BC. Uh, we have projects. We have some very tantalizing prospects in Nevada as well. Morgan did a, a reconnaissance program down there in, I think it was 2009, and put together some really interesting rocks, uh, some of which we uh, recently uh, optioned out to a company called Abacus Mining and Exploration, the Willow project there. But then uh, I think what we're really known for uh, is the work that's been done by Morgan and Duane effectively since 1995 on eastern Mexico. Right. And uh, it's, it's that area and that belt of rocks where we're the first mover. We've, we've been there longer than anyone else. We've redefined the geology in the area. And over the course of either testing ourselves directly or having partners test uh, seven different projects, uh, we've made three discoveries, <clears throat> which isn't a bad hit rate. It, it's a brand new territory. Uh, between Caballo Blanco, which is now owned by Alio Gold, and uh, Agnico Eagle just put uh, about $10 million into that company a few months ago. Uh, Ixtaca, which is owned by our sister company, Almaden Minerals, and, um, and of course now El Cobre, which is this emerging gold copper porphyry in Veracruz. So Almadex itself came about, it was all part of the larger Almaden group. Uh, until 2015 when it became clear to us that Ixtaca, uh, this project in Pueblo State, which has about, you know, mine plan and reserves <coughs> of about over two million ounces uh, gold equivalent, we recognized that had really good legs under it and could justify its own corporate structure. So right. uh, rather than spinning that out for tax reasons, it made more sense to spin everything else out into, uh, into Almadex. So what Almadex is really is the continuing legacy of 35 years of work. Uh, in addition to those prospects, we have royalties as well. We have a 2% royalty on the Extaca project. Uh, we have a 1.5% royalty on the Caballo Blanco project. And, you know, it was somewhere in the range of 15 or 16 other royalties on earlier grassroots projects that we think very highly of as well. So uh, those things don't come about overnight. Uh, they're the product, they take time. Uh, they're the product of joint venture agreements, option agreements. Uh, and before all of that, a uh, lot, lot of thinking and prospecting. So. That portfolio is uh, there's some fundamental value there that I think a lot of people forget about. Okay, uh, which I agree with. I mean, it's, I think it's a big underpinning for the valuation. The other one, of course, is is the ongoing work at El Cobre. Um, you've been drilling in an area called Norte through most of this year. Um, you just started drilling recently at a target that I think is really exciting looking, uh, Rio Trembrillo, and these are all on the same larger El Cobre project. I mean, can you give us like a thumbnail sketch of of, of what your targets are and what you're what you're trying to accomplish. Yeah, uh, the first thing that jumps out at me about El Cobre is w why is it still there? Um, we're talking about a project that's about 200 meters above sea level. Uh, we're next to the Pan American Highway. We have three phase power crossing the project. Uh, we're near the largest container port in Mexico. Um, the infrastructure's out of this world. Uh, so why why is a, an area of such obvious alteration and outcropping porphyry still available? Uh, effectively, Mexico missed the porphyry exploration boom of the 60s and 70s. It was um, closed to foreign investment until 1992 uh, in that a, a foreigner couldn't own a majority interest in a mineral prospect. Um, when that changed, we got down there and 
Uh, we were one of the very few groups to actually go to Greenfields areas in Mexico. Uh, most people went to the more established districts in the Sierra Madre. Uh, we looked at it kind of like people look at Nevada now. Uh, Western Nevada was the Silver District, the Com Comstock Low to put Nevada on the map. It's still known as the Silver State. But with time and, and creativity and, and, and people you know, going out and exploring, we found the Carlin Trend, we found Bingham Canyon, we found these elephants. And we, we saw a similar um, argument uh, for Mexico. So yeah, we found this El, El Cobre project. There are a multitude of uh, corporate um, activities. We've had four different joint venture partners there since 95, for example. But through it all, uh, Morgan and Duane managed to claw back 100% ownership of this El Cobre prospect. And what we have there is about, um, well, I guess we, uh, to, to date, uh, four outcropping porphyry centers over a strike length of about four kilometers. It's a world-class thumbprint when you look at uh, the alteration, the geochemistry, the geophysics. Uh, and it's been barely touched, notwithstanding the fact we've had four different JV partners uh, for, for a project of this scope. Uh, the drilling has been minimal. So when we went back into it uh, in August of last year, 2016, we just extended a hole that had been drilled by a previous operator and immediately found uh, very significant uh, gold-rich copper porphyry intersections uh, at, at this northernmost part of the project. Uh, but really this is a district-type porphyry play and as you, as you say we have this very exciting target about two kilometers south of Norte called it's part of the uh, Villa Rica target. We've, we've established a zone called the Rea Timbrio zone, uh, over which we took some uh, samples, surface samples, channels, subcrop, um, and grab samples. Uh, I think it was 18 samples averaged around one and a half grams per ton gold, which is, uh, for a porphyry system, as you know, uh, yeah. significant. Yeah. So uh, yeah, we started drilling that. We're really excited about it. Uh, we're hopeful that, much as we believe that we've established um, uh, a target in the Norte zone which merits both further expansion drilling as well as some infill drill, drilling in view of establishing a resource. We're hopeful that uh, uh, Rea Timbrio will likewise establish a second platform here in a project that we think ultimately has the potential to establish multi multiple platforms for right. uh, resource development. So we, we can expect this sort of ongoing drill results through the next few months? I mean you guys you guys own your own drills. I know you can you can drill quite efficiently. So you've got two rigs. Going we have in? two rigs at the project. Yeah, and uh, one is busy at uh, at, at uh, Rea Timbrio. So yeah, you can anticipate drill results uh, uh, as soon as the labs are, are uh, kicking them back at us. And obviously, we do our internal QAQC as well. So uh, yeah, the news flow should be uh, should be plentiful uh, going forward here. Um, and certainly, uh, uh, as I mentioned, this, this is a product, uh, project with multiple targets and you can uh, you know, presume that we're going to test more than just Rio Timbrio and Norte as well. Okay, this is a, it's a very, you know, I, I think it's one of the best drill plays out there. Um, it's still slightly under love, but I mean, I'm, I'm a big fan of Ray. I mean, when you look at the surface numbers there, it, it looks like something that could really uh, could really generate some exciting drill holes. Of course, there's no copper at surface because it leaches out, so that's that's a total mystery. I mean, we'll just see what comes back from the lab, but this is one you definitely want to have on your radar and maybe more. Uh, great project, good valuation. Uh, thanks for coming and uh, presenting to our subscribers. At no Mental problem Extra at all. Form. Yep, thanks, thanks very much, Doug. Eric. Appreciate it.